Hi, this is Sandy with a little bit of glitter, and today I have a card using Lawn Fawn's new Give It a Whirl die, along with one of their older stamp sets, Birthdays Before and Afters. This is actually a perfect die for any one of the Before and Afters, just because it kind of does the same thing as the picture changer. Anyway, go ahead and hit subscribe if you'd like to be notified of future videos. You can also follow me on Instagram at Sandy Cogdill or on my blog, A Little Bit of Glitter. All right, let's get started. To start this card, I'm going to go ahead and cut out some balloons from the outside in stitched balloon stackables. I've cut out two of the medium size and then a small one. I'm using Stripes and Sprinkles paper collection. They were actually some free pieces that I got from Lawn Fawn um, with a previous order. Sometimes they send some papers and I was really thankful for that. For the base of my card, I'm using a piece of ombre paper from the Rainbow Forever uh, paper collection that's new from Lawn Fawn this fall or this spring. And I cut it out using the large uh, slimline die. Then I'm going to go ahead and spatter it with some gold watercolor, gold metallic watercolor paint. I will do that on all of my little balloon pieces. Um, that just helps add a little bit of texture and color and interest to the little pieces. Once that watercolor paper has dried, I want to add a little bit of Distress Oxide ink to the edges of those cutout pieces. For the Give It a Whirl piece, I'm actually layering those two together so that I can kind of bring up that yellow uh, ink up on top of that top wheel that turns. For the yellow, I am using Mustard Seed Distress Oxide ink. For the blue, I'll be using Faded Jeans. And for the peach color, I'm using Dried Marigold. I've used the Scripty Hugs die to cut out two of the sentiments. I actually use scrap paper from where I cut out the slimline uh, card base. So I'm going to go ahead and just glue those together just a little bit offset kind of to the right. I will later in the video um, speckle those with some of the metallic gold watercolor just because they just seemed kind of bland and dull uh, once I got those put on the card along with the little balloons. I'm going to use my Misty for this next step. I've got my back piece to the Give It a Whirl uh, dot mechanism. I've also covered it with the Give It a Whirl template just so I know not to stamp out of that particular area. I've got the part of the stamp set that's the cake that has a piece cut out of it and I'm going to go ahead stamp that along with the sentiment on that back piece first. I want to make sure that my cakes line up just right on the give it a whirl. So I'm going to lay my cake stamp, the full cake stamp, on top of the cake that's got the piece cut out of it and go ahead and close my Misty on top of it. That way I know exactly where that cake needs to line up. Then I'm going to go ahead and take that top piece, the piece that does the spinning in the Give It a Whirl, and put that down on my Misty, being careful to line it up with the slit in the bottom part of the Misty. If you don't line those two up, then your, your cake is going to be cattywampus and, and it, it's just not going to work. Now that I know where my cake is going to lie on that top piece, I can go ahead and lay in my sentiment. So I put the happy up above and the birthday down below. I will also remove that cake off of my Misty at this point, just to make sure that I don't get any ink that might be left on the cake at this point. Um, the last thing you'd want to do is kind of mess it up right now. <laughs> 
which I have done in the past. And now we're ready to start coloring. I'm using Copic markers. Uh, I felt like the background was such a pale yellow that it wasn't going to be any problem as far as coloring it. Uh, you wouldn't even have to use two different colors or do any shading. It's such a small image that I don't think it really would make that big of a difference. But anyway, the colors that I've used are YR01, YR02, B91, B95, E35, E37, BV00, BV01, and Y35 for the little flames on the candles. Okay, it's time to start putting things together. So I've cut a connector piece out of some copy paper and I've folded it in half. It's got a little bit, uh, it's got a little score line on it once you cut it out. I'll go ahead and fold that in half. I'll put some glue tape on one side of that and then I will adhere it to the top piece, the piece that moves around on the die or on the give it a whirl. I'll put that on the top of that slit, or that opening, and I kind of center it in between the, the edge of the die and the center of the circle. Once I get that adhered, I'll go ahead and put some more adhesive on the other side of that connector piece. Since we've cut out a second die piece, the one that does the spinning, we're going to go ahead and layer the connector in between those two pieces. And you're just going to line up the two circles and the two slits together so that you don't see edges behind either one of the pieces once you've got them adhered together. Now with the little handle, you're going to take your glue tape and you're going to go ahead and put it just on that bottom piece, um, not over the whole thing. You're going to open up that little sandwich circle now and on the bottom half, the one that's not glued together by the connector piece, you're going to insert that little handle in there uh, just so that the edge of this, the cut part of the circle is even with the top edge of that area that you've just glued. That's going to give you the little handle that you'll use to spin that around in your give it a whirl. Once you get that top piece inserted into the bottom piece, it takes a little bit of working to get that piece to spin around real easy. So I just kind of keep moving it back and forth until it starts spinning pretty freely. 
You can also use some anti-static powder that sometimes helps that piece to move um, pretty freely. I've also found that um, cardstock seems to move a little bit better than the pattern paper and I think it's just because there's a little bit more weight to it but the pattern paper still works you just need to work with it a little bit I'm going to go ahead and glue on the little piece um, that covers that handle that's got the arrow in it and a little bit later I'll insert uh, some gold cardstock in that arrow now we're going to take some thin foam tape and place it all around that outside circle, making sure not to um, impede that piece that does the spinning. So I always like to try to keep that foam tape right on top of the stitching that's on that back piece. That really helps me um, keep that lined up so that I don't have that top piece hitting anything and getting stuck as I'm trying to make that uh, circle. Sorry you can't see that very well. I kind of forgot about keeping that centered underneath the camera. Um, but once I get that on there I'm going to move that mechanism around a few times just to make sure that nothing is getting hung up on that foam tape. Um, I'll do that a quite a few times before I actually remove the um, tape liner and before I adhere it to my card. As you can see, I'm still playing with that little handle to make sure everything's still moving um, easily. Now, to make the balloon, since I wasn't able to use the largest balloon out of the outside in um, stitch balloon stackables, I went ahead and I took the hat from that die set and I just used the triangle part to create my own little balloon and then I covered it with a bow that has been cut out of some rose gold glitter card stock. I don't think anybody would even notice that that wasn't one of the balloons from the set. Now I'm just going to play around with the little um, balloons and the little streamers with the balloons just trying to figure out where they look best. I didn't want to have them just all lined up perfectly so I had the medium ones going off the side on both sides knowing that I would just trim off part of it. I didn't want them all like straight across either. So I'm just going to play around with where they look best. I'll go ahead and glue on the little string um, that would hold the balloon down underneath where I want it. I also realized at this point that I just did not have enough balloons. It just seemed kind of empty in different areas. So I went back and I cut out um, two more, three more balloons. No, just two more balloons. I cut out a purple one and a pink one of the smaller balloons. And I decided with the pink one, I would go ahead and pop that up in between the two medium ones that are on the lower part of the card. Since I already had the top part popped up, I didn't feel like that would look very weird. And then I did my other two little balloons at the top kind of offset, like they were flying off the card also. Of course, I had to start all over with um, speckling them in my little speckle box. So I speckled them the same way I did my other ones with the metallic gold watercolor paint. And then on the edges, I used Villainous Potion for the purple and Saltwater Taffy for the pink ones. All right, that's pretty much it for this card. I will point out that it'd probably be best if you're going to make this card when you cut out that give it a whirl um, wheel that you do it so that your handle is up into the card as opposed to the outside. Um, I'm afraid if you had it on the outside it would stick out and be a hindrance when you uh, put it in an envelope. If you like this video go ahead and give me a thumbs up. 
can go ahead and hit subscribe if you'd like to be notified of future videos. You can follow me on Instagram at Sandy Cogdale or on my blog, A Little Bit of Glitter. I hope you have a great day and thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye.